Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is The Best MEDC, and today we're talking about hard wallets. I know not everybody loves them, and I know most of you probably prefer a leather wallet or a soft wallet of some sort, but there are also a lot of you out there who do like hard wallets, just like me, and I figured no better time than now to talk about my favorite hard wallets. I've been through a lot of them. I picked up some specifically for this video to try out, and there are some at the end of the video that I'm gonna talk about that do not make the cut. So that's what this is all about. These are my 10 favorite hard wallets, and let's do the damn thing. I don't think you can even begin to make a video about hard wallets without including or even considering Ridge Wallet. Uh, they are old school in the game. I think they've been around since 2013. I don't know that they were the originators of the hard wallet or even this uh, sandwich style elastic wallet, uh, but they are definitely one of the most prominent hard wallet makers out there today. For sure. So the way it works is very, very simple. You have two pieces of metal. Uh, well, there's more than two pieces, but for the sake of the argument here, we have two pieces of metal that are held together with three pieces or two pieces of elastic actually. So you have one here and one on either side. This one keeps the cards from sliding out the other end. And these are what hold it together. Beautiful thing about these wallets is how thin they are. I mean, they're very, very thin. They can get thick though. So the Ridge Wallet is said to hold one to 12 cards without stretching out. They've tapered one side so the card slides in very, very easily. And you can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 cards very easily and still have room for cash on the other side. Speaking of cash, I think that's really what Ridge Wallet does the poorest or the weak point of the Ridge Wallet. There is a way to put a money clip on the Ridge Wallet and then you also have this little elastic cash strap that holds quartered cash like so. And it works, it's fine, it does the job. It's a, it's a place that could be improved upon. And I don't like those money clips because they add to the thickness and don't let this thing fit so slim and tight in your pocket. It just adds some ridges that aren't always comfortable. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of the money clip on it. But if you're gonna go with something similar to Ridge but not Ridge, I would highly recommend this one. So Ridge is the first one on this list. The second one is actually gonna be a vertical rendition of a very similar thing from West Made. And the reason I really like this wallet is the way that it handles cash. It's also tapered, so these go in very easily from the bottom. This one's not gonna hold nearly as many cards. I don't know how many it holds. There we go, that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. So it holds that comfortably. And then on the back side, you have this elastic strap that's flush, it's actually beneath the G10 and you hold your quartered cash there. I think this is a more elegant way of doing it. And I also like that this is much, much more lightweight. Um, and it's really grippy too. I like the, the textured G10 on this. I, I just think this is a cool look and a different take on something that's been done 100,000 times. But really where you're you're gonna benefit here from this Westmade is the price. This one is $50 in this configuration. There is a pro version that's gonna be a little more expensive and I think it's a little more skeletonized than this one. And then of course you can get an all carbon fiber one and I think that one's gonna be 65. So all in on a Westmade wallet, you're gonna be under $65, which is, which is really good. I think these are made really well and they're made in the USA. So Westmade wallet, I think these are quite nice. So I've talked about these before a good bit on the channel. These come from a friend of mine, Corey, here in Charlotte with Vice Hardware. And I love this wallet. Um, it's, it's definitely a polarizing design. It's definitely something that, you know, you really have to be into this to, to want one of these wallets, especially considering the price of the titanium ones. But I love this design. So similar idea because you're sandwiching cards between two pieces of metal, but this one works totally differently. So you have some shot cord here at the bottom, which can be replaced if it breaks, which is nice. And then you have uh, four arms right here, one on each side or two on each side. I think they might go all the way through, so it may actually just be two arms, but these 
pivot this bottom plate off the top plate and then the shock cord pulls it down. Before I go any further, I should mention, so these uh, little demo cards from Phantom Wallet uh, all have ridges, like raised numbers and letters on them. Most of my cards now don't have that. Like the cards in the wallet that I'm carrying today, by the way, Rustic Heirloom, this is gonna be the Carry Commission exclusive Oma Leather coming out very, very soon. Just shameless self plug. Most of the cards I carry right now do not have any raised lettering at all. They're not embossed at all. They're all flat. So you can actually hold more cards than you used to because those letters all take up space. Whereas on the new cards, this Apple card and my new debit cards, none of them have raised lettering. So everything's a little more slim. It's way, way nicer. But with that said, to add cards to this Vice wallet, you stretch it up from the bottom and you can slide these cards in. Adding extra cards is also simple. Once you've got cards in there, it's easier to lift that plate and you can just keep going. How many can we fit in there? Can we get all 12? Maybe? No. That's 11. That's a lot. It's stretching it, but it's doing it. It can hold them. It doesn't like it. I'd say this is better with like eight or so cards. So this is the F1 and this one is the F22 Raptor. The main difference between them being this one is aluminum and this one is titanium. The difference in price is also fairly significant. So the F1 wallet is $115 for the aluminum variant. It does have a titanium clip on there. I believe that is extra. This one, the titanium version starts at 225 if you want titanium, but the F22 Raptor version, this custom plate that you see here, this version is gonna be actually $300. It's a special version of it, but you can get a cheaper titanium one. Just to touch on these money clips real quick. This is an old style money clip, it's magnetic, and he's done these in leather and this carbon fiber material. I don't know that he even offers this anymore, but this was my preference. I like this because it, it just kind of keeps it really tight and slim. Again, the money clip version, if you can see that, it just kind of, it doesn't allow this to sit as neatly in the pocket, but it works, it works fine. I'm just not a money clip guy. And that's just kind of the downside to most hard wallets I'd say is, is cash. If you carry a ton of cash, hard wallets probably are not your friend, but the money clip is gonna work. This is actually probably gonna expand to hold a little more than this magnet will, at least a little more securely. And the thing that I think is so cool about these two wallets right here is that Corey makes all these custom plates that you can swap out. So you, if you get bored with it, you can buy an additional plate and swap it out. Like you've got these that are bottle openers. This one's just a cool little polygon pattern. This one I like, it says fortune favors the brave. And then you have a Besker steel if you're you know, into Mandalorian Star Wars. My favorite plate of all of them is this one right here, but I, I keep this one on here because this is just a cool wallet. My preference out of these two, honestly, truly is gonna be the F1, this aluminum version because it is so much lighter. It is almost half the weight of the titanium. It's kind of hard to believe that, but it's true. Um, I love the look of this one, but I prefer the weight of the aluminum F1 wallet. But Vice Hardware Wallet, I would say this is my second most carried hard wallet, period. And since I talked about my second most carried hard wallet, we have to talk about my absolute most carried hard wallet, which is, and I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing me talk about it, the Giltec Raw or Rapid Access Wallet. This is about as minimal as you can get. The only other thing that's more minimal than this is probably the Lever Gear Wallet, the Tool Card Pro. Um, I'm not including this because I feel like this is really more of a money clip than a wallet or card holder. But it, I mean, it's all the same, right? It serves the same function, but it doesn't really make the list because I think the others are a little bit better options. But this is a good option for like 25 bucks. This is solid, but this one's just stupid simple to use. You push your cards in the end, push this arm down, slide the cards over it, and slide them the rest of the way in. That's it. I, I just love how thin, slim, and simple it is. There's no moving parts. There's nothing to break really and your cards come out very easily and go back in very, very easily. The downside to the rapid access wallet is that you can't buy one right now. I hate doing this to you guys. I really, really do. Now I have three more. So this is the titanium version. The titanium slim version went for, I want to say $150. $40, the thicker version. So it comes in two different sizes that you can see right here. So there was a thicker titanium version, I think called the plus that one went for $160. And then these are all aluminum versions, which were con 
considerably cheaper. The thin or slim aluminum versions were $50 and then the thicker or the plus version, I believe was 60 or $70. So these were much more affordable if you got the aluminum, plus they came uh, anodized in different colors, but the titanium one is just, this is exactly what I wanted in a wallet. And I've carried this more than I think any other wallet period. I, I just absolutely love this thing. And some of you are gonna say, you're saying wallet, but all of these are just card holders. Yeah, wallets are for the most part, just card holders these days. But I know more people who carry slim minimalist wallets like this than anything else. So for all intents and purposes, these are wallets now, okay? And this is without a doubt, my favorite and most carried hard wallet. Bar none. If you want something that's almost as minimal as this right here, but you want it to be one available and considerably cheaper, what you're looking for is the Trayvax Summit Wallet. So the Summit Wallet does not have the armor plate. The Armored Summit is the exact same thing with this little armor plate, which they say is RFID blocking. I, I really don't care or pay attention to RFID, but basically you have a canvas strap, a one inch canvas strap that can be adjusted right here. So it cinches down if you need to tighten it. You can loosen it if you have more cards and then you can put this armor plate over the front and you have what is effectively the same footprint with a little lanyard loop in a wallet that is $35. So this is steel, so it's not titanium, it's not aluminum, it's steel. It does have a little bit of heft to it, not a lot, but I really like this. And this has a solution for cash that the rapid access wallet doesn't. Cash can be quartered and slid right there in the back. I love this wallet. I think this is one of the best bang for buck wallets out there if you're looking at hard wallets. Trayvax Armored Summit, phenomenal. And you don't have to have this front plate on there. You can run it just like this without that front plate. Put it in this one, which you can see is much looser. It can hold quite a few more cards, eight cards. We could definitely fit a ninth in there. So what happens uh, with this Summit wallet, I have 10 cards in here right now, I believe, looks like. I have two more that you could fit in here. It's tight right now, but you can adjust this strap out just a little bit more and you could fit 12 cards in there. No problem, but what happens when you pass eight cards, at least with the embossed cards, uh, they they sit on top of this little retaining clip that holds eight, so they would slide out the bottom if you're not careful. So that's just something to be aware of. You could definitely carry more if you needed to, but they might not be as secure. The Trayvax Armored Summit, I think is gonna be the, I think it's the best bang for buck wallet in this whole list. And it's definitely in the top three for me, I love it. So going back to one of these elastic style or sandwich style wallets, we're going back to Vice Hardware actually with his other wallet. So he's got the F1, the F22, and then we have what he calls the hatchback or the clam or the clamshell. He's got a few different names for it, but basically same concept. You have two pieces of metal held together with some elastic and it is in a super, super minimal footprint. I, this is the smallest wallet of all of them here by far, just because it doesn't even, it's not even matching the, the height of the cards, just the width uh, or, you know what I'm saying. Again, this is not something that comes up much for me because I just don't carry cash, but that would work. You could do that. So this one is made right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And it's 55 bucks. Uh, I think this thing is really cool and it's underrated. I think more people need to know about the hatchback wallet. It holds plenty of cards. I've got what, eight in there right now. I feel like it can keep going. That's 10, 11, 12, look at that. 12 cards in this ultra minimal wallet. I'm a fan. I, I like this thing a lot. Maybe we'll do some runs with Corey and do a carry commission version of this in different colors. I think that'd be fun. Next up, we are moving to a different category of wallets. These I'm gonna call button style or automatic, I, I don't know what I'd call them, trigger wallets. But basically you push a button and the cards fly out the top. Uh, I really like this. It's thin, it's very slim, it's sleek. You've got additional card space over here if you need it. And then you can put cash here quartered, just like all the others that use this external elastic loop. As you know, I don't really care for the external loop. You could take this whole thing off, right? If you didn't want all this stuff on here and you just wanted this card holder, 
this could be your whole wallet. It's pretty cool. It's very sleek. I like how it looks. I like the color. And they also sell this with a leather cover on it. I think that leather cover also will hold some cards or cash. So this version of it is $80, I think 79 bucks. And then you, if you want the leather additional, I think it's another $10 or something like that. But um, I think it works well. So obviously right now we only have these little paper cards in here. Let's get these mock cards in here to see. I think this is four or five cards, five cards. Let's make it four. Yeah, it works really well with four. But again, if you're using cards more like mine, I've got six cards here and they, they, they slide in there just fine. So a, a thinner card without the embossed letters or numbers works really well in these. Extra wallet, I mean, there's not a whole lot to it. You can expand with this plate right here, like I showed you, um, if that's something you're interested in. If I were to carry this wallet, I would probably carry it without this little loop on it. Maybe the band, but without this plate. I guess that's an RFID plate, technically. But yeah, it's just meant to be pressed with your, your pinky. I would say that this is the most ergonomic trigger style wallet of them all. And the last thing I will say about Extra is they have a, it's almost like an AirTag by Apple, but they have a, a thing that you can attach to this so that you can find your wallet if you lose it as well. Okay, more trigger styles. This I think is the one I get the most questions about. And this is Phantom. This is the X wallet. They also have the S, but I don't really know the difference between the X and the S, but there are three different sizes of this. So all of these hold different amounts of cards. Obviously we have the thinner one and I think this is like four to six cards, something like that. The biggest thing about the Phantom wallet that I'm not a huge fan of is the way the cards come in and out of the wallet. So the way that this opening is, um, they're very secure in here. They're not going anywhere, but to get the card out, say you want this middle one here, you've got to like separate it and then pull it out this way. And to go back in, you've got to come in at an angle. It, it's not that bad, but it's just something that takes some getting used to where most of these, these cards are coming out of the top, right? It's in one way, out the same way. I struggled with like figuring this thing out originally. I do think it's, it's cool. I think it looks cool. It's very slim, but I think the extra just kind of has it beat a little bit. Medium size is the one I would go with. It's thin enough. This one I think is a little too thin. Like I could probably get by with this one with four cards or five cards. In fact, if I can cover it up, I'll put my own cards in here. I never even tried out this smaller size. I carried this one for a couple of weeks. I enjoyed it, but I've got six cards. Some of these are very thin, like very paper thin, but it works. Yeah, I could get by with that. Okay, the next one is, I would say, my second favorite Trayvax wallet, and I would really call this one a hybrid wallet. So this one uses a little button retention system that's all adjustable. Everything about this wallet is adjustable, which I think is really cool. So you have, um, it looks like Torx screws, it might be hex. Look like Torx, but you have a set of screws here on the back that you can adjust. So you can loosen these and adjust that strap in. You can adjust this one in and adjust this way. And then you can adjust this snap to be tighter or looser. So you can adjust this thing to accommodate for more or less cards and cash. The way it works, is you're gonna slide your cards in right there and then slide this snap over. I probably have one card more than I normally carry in here, but um, you can kind of stretch it a little bit. And then let's take one out because it's kind of tight. So you have your cards in the back and then your cash can go quartered right there and then strap over, snap it closed. Uh, I think it's just really, really nice. It looks nice. They have a nice leather on the top here. And I, I like the way that the leather and metal look together and that leather is gonna cushion a little bit. So a lot of people say they don't want a hard wallet because of how hard it is in the pocket. I personally think a hard wallet in the front pocket is not that big of a deal. Your phone, you carry that in your front pocket usually or your back pocket and it's hard and rigid. It's no different with a wallet. Um, the, the real trick is just not carrying everything in your wallet. I carry three debit cards my driver's license and two health insurance cards. That's it. That's all I carry with me every day. But the Trabex Contour Wallet, I think this thing just looks great and it, it works really well. 
And just in case you need it, there's a bottle opener right here. I forgot to mention it with the Armored Summit as well. Um, this right here, this armor plate has a bottle opener. The only thing about the contour that will give some of you pause is the price. The Travex contour is $150. They do offer this in a titanium version now because this one is steel, so it's a little heavier. The titanium version, uh, so you see it right there, $200 for the Contour Wallet in titanium. It also comes in brass, which I did not know. That looks cool. But it's only like partly brass. There you have it, Trayvax Contour. This last wallet is one that just popped up in my search. I was just trying to be thorough and make sure I got everything covered and what I came across is this Bellroy flip case. And Bellroy stuff is very classy, elegant, whatever. But basically, this opens up on both sides and you can put cards and cash in here. So we're gonna throw some cards down in here. There's four cards down in there pretty easily. But then on the other side, you've got another spot where you can put some cash. Uh, and this is gonna be pretty thin and secure, right? There's, that stuff's not coming out of there. It's magnetically closed. I like how it looks. I like how it works. This is something that I would carry if I was trying to be a little more like business oriented, especially when you're looking at something like this. I think this held all of mine without a problem. Yeah. See, as, soon, as long as you're not carrying these embossed cards, that's six cards in there and then cash on the other side. So that's actually really nice just having all of your stuff. It's got a little bit of a larger footprint, just a little bit than what I normally carry, but it's about the same thickness and it's it's hard. So yeah, that is the Bellroy flip case wallet and these are gonna set you back $70. It comes in a bunch of different colors too, so you can kind of match it to your aesthetic. Okay, so I have several wallets and I'll go ahead and pull them out. That did not make the cut. It's all of them. Yes, this is all of the wallets. I have owned some of these already, like the Trayvac Ascent wallet. Um, very similar to the Contour, but this is just like their older design. And I don't think it holds up quite as well as this. This is gonna be a much cheaper wallet. So I think this would be totally fine for you if, if that's what you're looking for. If you want something like the Contour and don't wanna spend all that money, you can get the Ascent. It works effectively the same way. And since we're talking about Trayvac's, they sent this one to me, and this is actually what sparked the idea for this video. This is Trayvax's new bifold wallet, and I'm just not digging it. I think the idea is that you can put whole cash in here and not have to have it or quarter it. Right, so you can put cash there, and then you can still put your cards in this little slot right here. But the thing is, this is only gonna hold maybe four-ish cards before it gets really tight, maybe five. I don't know, I'm not a fan of this. I, I wasn't a fan from the start and, and just, it's not doing it for me. Just kind of going similar, we have the Dango Bifold here. That's where the rest of those Phantom cards went. <laughs> I knew I had more. Um, this is not bad, it, it's really not. And this one is really, really adaptable, meaning that you can carry it just like this and you can use this to hold cards in. You can flip this thing around and put stuff out here. And you have a card access out here. There's just a lot going on with this wallet. And I think that's really the part that makes me not want to put it on this list. It's almost too much. I don't want to have to think about how to use the wallet. I just want to use it. Hellbent wallet. I actually really like this thing. I carried this a lot when uh, it was given to me at Blade Show a few years back. You just slide the cards in and they stay in place. It's two pieces of billet aluminum and they are screwed together here, but loose enough to where it can still pivot. And that's really all there is to it, just two pieces screwed together. This one's also a little clunky, like getting the cards in and out. Kind of have to fiddle with it a little bit. And I know that there's probably some trick to using it that I never really picked up on, but it just seemed, it just seemed like too much work for a wallet. And this one, I know it's gonna come up, the Grip6 wallet. I didn't even bother taking this out of here or carrying this thing myself. They do, uh, sell it without the leather. You can carry it just like this. Uh, they sell it without this finger loop as well, but the finger loop is just so you can hold it and keep it in your hand a little better. Um, yeah, that was that's never really been a problem for me, like dropping my wallet or whatever. The, the idea is that you can be doing other stuff and still hold your wallet. I don't know. Uh, I got the finger loop just to see if it, you know, worked well. Uh, 
not really. It shoots out just like some of these other wallets. The thing about the Grip Wallet, or the Grip 6 Wallet, it's big with or without this finger loop and this leather pouch on it. It's bulky, it's very bulky. But the other thing is this right here. Watch, you can shoot the cards out of this thing and the cards will fly out. So they're retained, they're not gonna come out here, but you can literally shoot your cards out. Uh, I think that's a very simple thing to avoid and not have to do or deal with in, in the real world. But uh, I don't know, I just found that kind of odd. I mean, this is my normal wallet footprint and look at this thing. It is just enormous. Ignore the finger loop, because you can get it without that. This thing is still enormous. And I think it was this one that sparked the idea of hard wallets. This one has been very popular of late. This is the Groove Life wallet, or Groove wallet, I guess they're calling it. It works well. I carried this for probably about two weeks, and it works well. It's fine. It does its job. Um, you got some other card slots here, and you can put quartered cash right there in that elastic band. So very similar to about everything else we've seen here, but a different take on it, right? You slide this up instead of pushing a button or something. Uh, the problem I have with this, one, it's a little bit bulky, not too bad. It, it's fine in terms of bulk. Like I didn't have a problem with it in my pocket. The biggest problem I have with it is this function right here. Um, sometimes my finger just slips. It's, it's not exactly super easy to grip. It would be better if this was like a grippier surface. And then the last one, because this has been recommended time and again. Um, I think it was Mike with Last Line of Defense that made these popular, or at least has talked about them extensively. And this is the flip side wallet. Um, I got this thing in. It's just not something I would carry in my pocket. It's big. It's the biggest wallet here. Like this is the, like a similar footprint in terms of dimensions and then look how much thicker this is and you can take this part off which is like an additional way to hold some cash on the outside and then you've got something that's a little thinner but it just feels it feels very cheap and it's got kind of a rolodex vibe to it i don't know maybe this would appeal to some of you but this is just not what i'm looking for in a wallet i don't know what do you think no, <laughs> that's a big negative from, from Alex. So there you have it. Those are my 10 favorite hard wallets. There are so many options and it's really tough to narrow these down to just 10. Um, that's why we have honorable mentions and maybe a few dishonorable mentions. Yeah, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite hard wallet is uh, and whether or not you like them. Do you carry a hard wallet? Yes or no, why or why not? Let me know in the comments down below. If you saw anything in this video you want to check out, hit the links in the description down below. Those are affiliate links and it helps support what we're doing here, but you can also go to patreon.com forward slash bestmedc if you want to support there. But that's it. Thanks again for watching and that's all for now. So until next time, carry on.